Well, hello everyone. It's been a few days since uh, I've been able to say hello. I have just gotten back into doing my regular job here at home. And I was even adding up all the uh, cost in that for the five-day trip that I'd share with everyone out there. And talk about some of the things that I realized and learned while being on the road for five days and doing continuous uh, videos for all of you. So let's get started. What I, uh, I did realize too, the last uh, video, I forgot to put the free campsites.net uh, down below. I will again leave them that link down below. That's where I stayed the one night, did not cost anything. It's where I've stayed at a few of my other places that I ventured to and taken all of you with me. It's just, a, to me, a pretty cool site to have that you can check and see what other people have in the past uh, thought of the place. And, you know, with being free, that's something that's always good. So... Yeah, this will probably be mostly me talking. I will, however, I have an awesome clip. I'll put somewhere in here for everybody. It was when I was coming back from Idaho. I just had to stop. It was like a 10, 15 second clip, but I'm pretty sure you'll appreciate that. Actually, why don't we just play it right now? See? <laughs> I don't know. There's something about a wheat field that when I was going into Idaho uh, to film Idaho Falls, there was lots of wheat fields that were just blowing the wind. It was just wonderful to see. Coming back, three-fourths of those fields were already being harvested, which is good because of the blast of coldness and the, the snow that got in the areas of like Wyoming and uh, Colorado, stuff like that. I think if I would have been a few days later, I would have been stuck over in that area a little bit longer since they had I-80 close to Wyoming the other day. So one of the things I forgot to do, I forgot to, of course, grab my tiny venturing shirt to, you know, have people ask questions. It's just interesting how some of the simple things you're like, oh, I got everything. And you're like, oh. Totally forgot that. I also forgot to add the time it takes to edit my videos, which when I was doing all the calculations, I'm like, okay, I need this to drive. I need uh, this time to film, you know, two to three hours. I did not uh, anticipate, hey, you know, I need uh, three to four hours for video editing. Then it takes normally an hour to convert, and then I have to find somewhere that has really good Wi-Fi, a good speed anyhow, to upload. Which it came to be, McDonald's, as you all know, was my friend. I did end up paying some at a uh, truck stop. Problem is, when you pay the premium, I think a lot of people are probably on that, uh, you know, streaming, doing whatever, and it took over two hours just to open load one of the videos. So that was something I learned. I also learned quickly that you had to go and the things that you mostly needed up front, you found quickly what you wanted within an arm's reach. Same thing with uh, breakfast. I just started leaving my uh, cereal box right in front, ready to go clean out the bowl right after I got done using it. Just made it simpler and easier. Of course, you know, making the bed real quick, made it a lot easier to crawl into at nighttime. I also found out that even though my shoes are really good for the hikes and everything, when you take them off at nighttime, yeah, they were quite strong. So I never had anything to uh, diffuse that nice sneaker odor. So that was one of the things I was just like, yeah, it took a little bit to get used to. 
every night, but it slowly dissipated out of the, the air and I was able to get to sleep. Uh, I did start out with 18 subscribers on the channel before I started this. I ended up uh, reaching out to Facebook and the night before I actually went and I had actually only 15 people that were friends on the Facebook or yeah Facebook uh, site for Tiny Venturing. Reached out to old classmates, friends, people that I know and I am now at 69 friends on the Facebook, uh, 27 subscribers on the YouTube channel, which is really cool. I had a little over 500 views when I first started uh, the trip, and like right now I'm like at 750. So thank you everybody that uh, friended me on Facebook. It's great to see all the people that I went to school with, uh, the friends, people that um, I was in touch with years ago when I did Facebook. But it's nice to see you all again. I hope you enjoy watching Tiny Adventuring. If any of you have yet to subscribe, go right ahead and subscribe in that. If there's anybody that I don't know, it's new, hey, shout out, say hello. Uh, I'm Charles, by the way, and welcome to Tiny Venturing. I enjoy doing this for all of you out there. So, and Sarah, thank you for taking a guess on where I was uh, when I was actually in Wyoming at the Grand Tetons. But thank you for for taking that guess just you know just to see where I was at another thing I found out roadside rest areas some of the states do not allow overnight parking uh, our state in Iowa does they have a one day uh, max you can stay it sounds like they don't strictly enforce it but just that thought made me uneasy when I was in Nebraska because they didn't I didn't I didn't want to be asleep in the back and have somebody knock saying that was over time of this, you know, staying there. So, you know, finding another place to stay, you know, that sort of made the inconvenience, but it just astounded me. I figured, you know, that's why rest areas were there. When people were tired, you could pull over. And a lot of times people at nighttime, you know, that's when we're used to sleeping. We get tired. We want to pull over and rest. Uh, but yeah. That was just something that really caught me by surprise. I did find a uh, um, link and a uh, website that had like like all the rules. I'll leave that down below too, just in case if you're ever traveling and you know you're stuck in that situation. Another thing, when I first hit Idaho, I was like, "Where's all the speed limit signs?" I'm like, "Do we are we at 65, 70, 75?" And it seems like some of the places they don't have that. I found one website saying like normal unmarked or like 65 unless noted, noted. And then like your um, cities and all that would be like 35. But yeah, again, it took a while and I was like, oh, it's 70, but I stayed at 65. So there was just a few of the things that uh, I probably learned on the trip. There's probably things I forgot. Uh, but yeah, for the summary... Um, of course, like I told everybody, I think you saw, I just had a little tiny cooler and I just stopped and got ice when I was at a gas station. Some of the gas stations, they just give you free cups of ice. If you could just go in there just for a cup of ice, they'll say that's good and you know, you don't have to pay for it. Two days were like that for me. I stopped and got ice every day except for that last day coming home because I really didn't have anything in my cooler except for some cheese. So I only spent $1.81 for the ice overall, which I thought that was pretty good for five days of keeping everything cold. Uh, food that I started out with was probably around $25 worth of food when I first started. Uh, for the trip, it was just a little over $40 at $40.31. That was me also eating at Monowai and that and, you know, leaving extra for Elsie, which, gosh, she was sweet. So 6531 there. For the gifts, of course, I did buy my mono white t-shirt. I did pick up a couple of souvenirs for my kids. Uh, I got the Animal Parks Pass for the $80. And then that boat trip that we went across on the Grand Teton on Jenny's Lake was $10. So all that was uh, 
136.54, which wasn't bad if you really think 90 of that was, you know, something I can use all year long. I just have to go to those places. Uh, now, for the big thing is the gas. I had 14 stops for gas, uh, equal to about to $258.81. Are you ready? I used 124.472 gallons of gas. I drove 2,855 miles. And just the average of all that, uh, I averaged out to be 22.93 miles per gallon, so about 23 miles per the gallon. For my car, I think it's like 17 to 19 miles per the gallon in uh, city and 23 or 25, I think it is on highway. Uh, depending on where I was at, there was times I was getting more, there was times I was getting less, you know, like up in the mountains. So the total cost of the whole five day adventure for me, uh, from start to finish, was four hundred sixty-two dollars and forty-seven cents. So for all this traveling and all the venturing, these places I got to see, it was basically ninety-two dollars and fifty cents a day. Um, you know, less than a hundred dollars. You know, staying in in your own vehicle that does make it a lot easier for uh, to bring your own food instead of eating out. Yeah, you're going to save a lot of costs. If you have kids, I I know how that is. Uh, my kids, of course, are much older now. But yeah, when they're younger, you stay at the hotels, you know, you stop, you get the souvenirs, you uh, have the quick meals, you know, here and there to, to go. So, you know, it adds up quickly. But yeah, I just wanted to see what it would, what the cost was like. The other nice thing is I actually tried to have a notebook and I started out good for the first couple of days of some of the plans. But it really doesn't, I mean, there's so many variables that can change. And like for me, one time I had no cell reception and it's like, where am I going to go for Wi-Fi? And then, you know, another time it was like, you know, I don't know, you know, up in the mountains, you don't have anything. So it's, it's a whole hit, hit or miss, you know, depending on. For me, for this uh, adventure, it was to find out what it would be like to actually go every day, film, edit that, get everything out for all of you out there that watch the channel and are with us, and to see on if that was something I would totally enjoy. For this trip, it was, you know, boom, 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 from here to there to here to there, and it was really fast paced. For me regularly to do it, I would probably, I missed so many places that I would have filmed. I mean, towns that just really caught my eye. I really liked what I saw. I thought they were interesting. You know, if that was a historical buildings or maybe that that was even like some of the tourist areas and how they had their towns set up, you know, because that's how they make their money. But it was just you know, different to not just take it slow and easy. But, you know, again, this was you need to see on how would it, how would it be to do it, you know. So even with the fast pace, if I can handle with the fast pace, I should be able to handle it with something slow. But I did. I enjoyed it. Uh, right now, you know, with my kids, I, I miss them terribly. It was like on day four. So, you know, to come back, uh, to see them, to get back into the regular routine, it's a little bit different now because I've gotten a little more of a taste of what it's like out there and to be able to just travel. So I hope uh, I haven't put any of you asleep. Maybe I should have said you need to watch this before bed uh, to get you some nice Z's for the for the evening. But yeah, I just wanted to let you know what, uh, what all came to be for the five states of five days. I actually thought if I could have got the next one, we really had a six state me coming back to Iowa it was another destination but yeah it was enjoyable to have all of you there with me I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the views the places if you've never been to those uh, a little more what they're about if you have any questions just leave a comment below I'll do my best to answer them real quickly uh, again like the video and you know be a subscriber to the channel so I'm Charles, and 
all of us here thank you and i'm glad that you're all here with us at tiny venturing and until the next venture we'll see you soon